Hey friends, this is Pastor Joe. There's a little boy named Johnny who went with his first grade class to visit their local police department on a field trip. Little Johnny looks up on the bulletin board and he sees pictures of the 10 most wanted men. Little Johnny gets big eyed and he asks the police officer, are those really wanted men? Friends, today I wanna to begin a new sermon series about a wanted man. His name is Jonah and Jonah is a wanted man. Jonah's on the lam. He's on the run. He's an escapee. He's being hunted. And what's interested is that he's not running from the law, but Jonah is running from God. Now, many of us probably know a little bit about the story of Jonah, but I just want to remind you, Jonah is a prophet of God who God sent to speak to the people of Nineveh. And the Bible makes it very clear that Jonah did not want to go. Jonah went kicking and screaming. And it's important to note, two things. The first thing is that we would be shocked if we were uh, uh, coming from that biblical time to hear that God uh, sent uh, Jonah to Nineveh, because most of the time a prophet spoke to the children of Israel, not to Gentile nations. And secondly, if there was any a nation that would surprise us that God would send us to, it's uh, Nineveh. Nineveh was the capital of uh, uh, Assyria, and they were wicked people. We would expect that that God would just wipe them out. And why would God warn them? The Syrian army was known for being torturers and and hacking off limbs of their defeated foes and, and pillaging and raping villages and burning down and turning the, the the defeated foes into slaves. They were horrible, wicked people. And in our hearts, we would want God to punish them. And yet in God's heart, God wants repentance from them and God cares about them. I think this is central to the story of Jonah. And I think it's also central to the story of the entire Bible. It's the question of how can God who demands justice show mercy? Here's how it begins. It begins with our scripture from Jonah 1 verse 1 and three. And it says this, now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittah saying, arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, cry against it for their wickedness has come before me. A few years ago, I was doing a, a Bible study with little kids in the apartment complex. And I said to them, Jesus says, love your, and then I let them fill in the blank. One little kid said, Jesus says, love your neighbor. Another says, Jesus says, love your family. One says, Jesus says, love your church. And I said, those are all great answers. But do you know that Jesus also says, love your enemies? One little girl put her hands on her hip and she says, I don't know which Jesus you're talking about, but that sounds crazy. I like that because that's our natural response, isn't it? Sometimes we pick and choose which Jesus we want to listen to. Uh, we love the Jesus that says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. We love the Jesus that prepares a place for us. We love the Jesus that, that's a sacrificial lamb who dies on the cross for our sins. But the problem is that sometimes uh, Jesus calls us to things that we struggle with and things that we think we know better about. Proverbs 3, 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Another translation says, and he will straighten your path. If there was ever a person who needed their path straightened. It was Jonah. But Jonah thought he knew better than God. And we, we sometimes do the same thing. Let me give you an example. Uh, what do you think is best? Chocolate cake or vanilla cake? All those who think chocolate cake's the best, raise your hand. Okay, all those who think that uh, uh, vanilla cake is the best, raise your hand. Okay, you're both wrong because actually cheesecake is the best, right? Or at least that's what I think. And sometimes we think that we know what's best and we think that we should tell God what to do. The word of the Lord comes to us and God tells us, I want you to, to do this. And we say, I don't wanna do it. And I, I think I, I should do something different. God tells us to forgive as we've been forgiven. Ah, I don't think so. I don't want to do that. God tells us to give. Ah, I, I don't think I want to do that. I think I know better. And we become like Jonah, a wanted man or a wanted woman. Well, here's what I want to say. Sometimes the word of the Lord comes to us and sometimes we respond with delay. 
We think in your mind, uh, you know what? I'm going to obey. I'm just not going to do it right now. My mom and dad taught me that delayed obedience is really disobedience. Maybe you can uh, uh, understand this example. You ever say to your, your son, I want you to go and mow the lawn. And they say, OK, I'm going to go mow the lawn. But but first they play video games for about an hour. Then they get on the phone for about two hours. And then they use the bathroom for another hour. And then two days later, the, the lawn still isn't mowed. And you go say to them, I told you to mow the lawn. And they say, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. By the way, that example is not about my son's Jojo or Zachary. Actually, that's an example that my father used 35 years ago when he was uh, preaching a sermon and used me as the example. Sometimes we think that we know better than God, and sometimes we delay in our response and obedience. Let me ask you, do you know how to tell how close a storm is to you? Well, here's what you do. You look at the lightning and then you count until you hear the thunder. So you see the lightning and then you say one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, boom, right? And, and then you see the lightning again and you say one Mississippi, two Mississippi, and boom. Well, that means that the storm is coming closer to you. Well, I think that we can use that same uh, method to see how mature we are spiritually. Yeah, we can see how long it takes between God telling us to do something and then us actually responding in obedience and doing it. So God says, I want you to go and I want you to invite a friend to church. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. Heck, we could drive to Mississippi before some of you would invite someone to church, right? <laughs> We think that that we know better than God. And sometimes what we do is we delay our obedience. Here's what the scripture says. It says, but Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fee and went on board to go with them to Tarshish away from the presence of the Lord. Jonah gets on a boat going in the opposite direction from where God told him to go. And let me say this, there will always be a boat going in the opposite direction of where God is calling you to go. You don't ever have to worry about making reservations or flight cancellations. There will always be a boat going in the opposite direction of what God calls you to do. And that boat is called temptation. See, sometimes we respond with delay. But then sometimes God calls us and we respond by running from God. Jonah runs in the complete opposite direction of where God is calling him. He goes to the port of Joppa and he gets on a, a boat going to Tarshish. I looked on a map and, and on a map we can see uh, where Joppa is. And, and he travels to Joppa and instead of going up to, to Nineveh would have been about 600 miles for him to get to Nineveh from, from uh, where he started in, in, in Jerusalem. But Jonah travels 3,000 miles in the opposite direction. Scholars estimate that Jonah could have been running from God for up to a year. That's a lot of running. You know what it makes me think? It makes me think that we could be sitting right beside someone who looks like they've got it all together, right? But in their hearts, they know that they have been running from God. They look sharply dressed in their, 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 their nice outfit or, or their matching purse. But if you look down, you'll see that they're wearing running shoes because they're running from God. Do me a favor. Tell your friends, you can run, but you can't hide, right? <laughs> I, I saw a, a, a meme earlier today, and this is what it said. Running away from your problems is a race you'll never win. If someone lies in their relationship, and instead of dealing with their problem, they just run to a new relationship. Someone steals at work, and instead of dealing with the problem, they just run away to a new job. Someone's abusive and self-centered, and, and, and instead of dealing with the problem, they just move to a brand new state. Well, will that solve the problem? Nope, <laughs> because they take the problem with them. You can't outrun yourself. But friends, I've got some good news. 
you also can't outrun God. And God will be chasing after you, urging you to trust him. Here's what it says in, in, in Psalms 139, verses 7 through 10. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of dawn and if I dwell in the remotest parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand will lay a hold of me. Little Johnny went with his first grade class to the local police department. And while they're there, they look on the bulletin board and they see pictures of wanted men. Johnny says to the police officer, is, is that really pictures of wanted men? And the police officer says, oh, yes. And the detective wants some captured real bad. Little Johnny says, well, why didn't you just keep them when you took their picture? Jonah was a wanted man. But guess what? God wants Nineveh as well. And God wants me and you. God wants the whole world. Earlier, I said that the central question of Jonah is how can a God who demands justice also show mercy? Well, the question ultimately isn't answered in the book of Jonah, but it is answered in the Gospels. John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who pays justice price, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Amen.